Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to talk about Photoshop Actions to speed up your workflow doing real estate photography. Now you know from other tutorials that I've done I use Actions throughout the entire workflow. I use presets in Lightroom as well. But using the flash ambient technique takes us into Photoshop where processes could be cumbersome at times and so it's good to speed those along the redundant constant processes. So here in in this tutorial I want to show how you can make an action which you may already know and that's fine if not this will help out during the first part of this so I'm gonna make a simple action first but then after that I want to show you how you can take it to a more advanced action and then how to put that all together during that flash ambient flow that during that work process to really get a good product done very quickly if you're not familiar with the flash ambient process you can see this video that's up here and there's a link to that and you can see then some of the steps that are done for lighting it and whatnot. And of course I have step-by-step -step instructions for this in the interiors book, which is part of my real estate photography series. And there's a link to all of my books down in the description for this video. And by the way, the second book, the advanced editing book will have some steps on making some actions as well. We're going to cover that here though. And we're going to take a look at how that applies to real estate photography. You ready to get started? Let's take a look. So here I've already opened up the common layers that we would be working with to do a flash ambient blend. On top here we have just that ambient shot which we're going to turn into luminosity mode. Underneath of that then I've got the flash layers. This happens to be a composite so I could evenly light the room a little bit better, enough to get color back there. Something I talked about in the uh, previous video when doing a flash ambient blend you do need to have at least some color in the far uh, part of the room, especially big rooms like this. And of course this was very dark paint even on the ceilings so it wasn't reflecting the light very well. So anyways that's a topic for another time. You can see the previous video on why I did that composite but here it's done. So what we want to first do though is typical. We want to turn this layer into luminosity mode like we typically do and then add a layer mask to it so that we can brush in then. You've seen this done before where I can then brush in some of that ambient to start getting a more realistic looking picture. Okay so before we get to that part of that process though that was kind of a bit of a cumbersome step. Something you would do over and over again for each photo. So let's back out of here and let's make an action. Get rid of that layer mask, turn it back into normal mode. So to make an action what you would do is you would press your little action button here. If you don't see that then you can go up to window and then actions and it'll bring out the same thing, this little actions uh, window. Now in here you've got different sets. I made a set down here, it looks like a folder and I called it tutorial actions. You can see other actions that I use on a regular basis here up above that. They're assigned to shortcut keys. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to make a special one that's going to take this uh, ambient layer, turn it into luminosity mode, add a layer mask. Very simple but repetitive process. So with that selected, I'm going to cl click this button over here, which is create new action. I'm going to name this something like we'll call it Amloom. That's fine. And it's going to be under the set tutorial actions. And I'm going to assign it to the function key F2 control. So if I hit control F2, it would fire that off. Now I'll start recording. All I have to do is the steps I would normally do to make that happen. Change the blending mode to luminosity and then layer mask hide. Then I just stop the action. That's it. I have my action made. Now at any time I can go up here and select that action or I can hit the shortcut key which is control F2 and it will be applied. Let's back out and take a look at how that would work. I'm going to delete that layer mask and turn it back into normal mode. All I have to do once again either hit control F2 or I can hit the play button here and that's applied. It turned the layer into luminosity mode. It added that layer mask so that's great. So now I could take that into the process of painting in the ambient that I want wherever I think that it's best needed for this particular picture. I won't belabor the point by adding all the ambient in here that I want but I'll get it to somewhat of a decent enough look here. So it looks somewhat eh, about realistic the way that I'd want it. Okay. Now the next step that's real common in the process here of doing the flash ambient blend is adding our darken mode window pull. Since that's the last picture that's usually taken, the last shot I should say, we typically have it at the very end. That's why it's down here at the very bottom. 
If we move that up to the very top, we turn that into darken mode, then we'd say layer mask hide, and then we'd take a, like a polygon or a brush or something, and then we'd be selecting that area that we want and having that fill in. So that would be just real quick here for those unfamiliar with it, that's what it would do. But there's some cumbersome processes to that. So let's go ahead and delete that layer mask. We're back and back out of here, turn it in normal mode, put it back down to the bottom. So this is where we would normally start. So this would be great to make an action for. The problem is it needs to go to the very top. So we might have multiple layers for it to jump. If I were to just to drag this up two, three, or four layers, and then another time I have something that's five or six layers of a very complex composite, it's not going to go to the very top. This is where the advanced part of this comes in. What we want to do to make this particular action then is we need to have a lot of layers. A fast way to do that is real quick before we do anything else, make a whole bunch of copies of some layer above. I'll just take this one and I'll just go control J a bunch of times to make a bunch of layers. Just made a whole bunch of copies. These are going to be thrown away. Don't need them. It's just for the first time making this action. Now let's start recording our action. For this action, under Tutorial Actions, we'll call this one Dark Mode Prep. Okay, And then we'll assign the function key F3 Control, so Control F3 would fire it off. I'm going to record it, and the first thing I'm going to do is move it to the top. An easy way to do that is if you hit Control, or if you're on a Mac, Command, and then the right bracket key, which moves it up a layer. You notice how my layer is moving up, and I'm going to do that until it reaches the very top. Now that it's at the very top, then I turn it into Darken Mode and then layer, mask, hide, and then stop the action. Okay, now I can get rid of those other layers and test it out. So I can get rid of all those copies that I made there, get rid of that, delete those layers, and now back this guy out. We're just getting back to where we started from so that we can start over again, turn him back into normal mode with no mask down at the bottom. Now when I play, that particular action, dark mode prep with my play button, he moves up to the top and sure enough he's in darken mode. All those other moves just kept going and going and going. You can see the list of them here. They just weren't needed so it just kept going and moving it up to the top a bunch of times. But anyways, now I've got that at the very top. Okay, so now I've got two great actions to use for doing the flash ambient blending. I've got one for my luminosity mode and then one for the dark mode prep. Okay, now remember those were control F2 and control F3. I'm going to collapse that and I'm just going to close this document out. I'm going to start over, which is one thing you do need to do if you're making actions for the first time and you want to use those shortcut keys. You need to exit the document, close the document out of Photoshop, and then open it back up again. So in this case, what we do is we just edit those as layers in Photoshop again. And once again, this action now is already made. I don't have to keep doing this. It's already made once for me, one and done. That's all that it's done. So now, remember it's Control F2, Control F3. So I first need to make my composite, and I could probably make an action for that too, but we'll just do that real quick before we get into anything else. So here, You've seen me do this, especially on the last video. I'll just hide that layer mask with 100% flow brush, just paint in myself. There we go, lower the flow a little bit, and now I've got a composite done. Okay, now our ambient layer. So now all I have to do is apply those actions. So let's go to, it's Control F2, and there we've got our uh, luminosity mode, we've got our mask on there, and now we'll just take a brush and we'll brush in our ambient just real quick where we want it. Okay, now you've seen me do this too with the 50 50 flambient where you don't even have to brush it in, but of course it's going to be more evenly distributed here. I don't want that because the dark of the foreground would be too much. So that's probably pretty good right about there. Okay, go down to our bottom layer, which is our darken mode window pull, and control F3. 
goes up to the top, it's in darkened mode, and so now we can take a brush, for instance, at 100% opacity, and we can start brushing in then our window poles. You can also do this with the polygon, like I showed in the example to show how to do it really quick. But this is a beautiful thing with using this darkened mode. You overlap, you don't have to worry about cutting out the windows, because darkened mode throws away all of those highlights. So anything that was overblown, overexposed in the, uh, in the interior is thrown away. Boom, there we've got our darken mode. So anyways, that was really quick then and didn't have to do those repetitive processes for the blending mode and the masks. And when, by the way, when this product was finished, the final shot looked like this. So there you have it for two examples for doing some actions for real estate photography. There's a lot more and there's a lot more you can do with Photoshop than you can with Lightroom. So when it comes to actions, they can be way more powerful than presets, but it depends on where this goes in the workflow. So first off, easy enough to make an action. Showed how to do that with just using, for instance, uh, the uh, ambient layer, turn it into luminosity mode and a layer mask. Very complicated one, fooling Photoshop into thinking where to move layers to. In this case, it was that darkened mode, the uh, overexposed shot for the interiors was exposing for the outside. The darkened mode window pull you've seen me use quite a few times and described throughout the books. Moving him up to the top and then doing the same thing with changing his blending mode, in this case darkened mode, and adding the layer mask. But there's a lot more you could do. So what I'd like to do is in the next video, I'd like to be able to show you how you can use Adobe Camera Raw inside of Photoshop, along with some other things, to really go beyond using just presets in Lightroom, just using Photoshop. Now this doesn't take uh, Lightroom out of the equation for using flash ambient blending, but I want to be able to show you this next video as well so that you can see how you could take actions even further, get some ideas on what you could do to then really speed up your workflow. Once again, any type of repetitive process that you're seeing that you need to do, make an action, you're going to save a lot of time. Anyways, I hope this particular video was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.